Absolutely. So now let's uh, chat legalese. Eric Mac uh, Macramella is with us. Eric, welcome. How are you? Yeah, I guess it's time for me to fill up some time as well, guys. I am good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good. Um, now, in in terms of, like, I'm going to spin the roulette wheel here. Okay, the NBA. What? Where is this going? The NBA. Yeah. Uh, and all, you know, it, it's uh, the NBA has some some serious issues, and um, I, I would think that unless things uh, change significantly in the short term, we're looking at a lockout. And this can be an extended lockout because unlike the, the NFL, with the NBA, you're looking at a fundamental overhaul of the business model. The NBA wants to roll back the salary cap from $58 million to $45 million. Mm. They want to go from guaranteed contracts, which we have in the NHL and the NBA and MLB, to non-guaranteed contracts, which we have in the NFL. And they want about an $800 million rollback in salaries. And I had a chance to listen to the NBA PA head, Billy Hunter. Uh, so he's the head of the union, talked two weeks ago at this conference, and he referred to the proposal as regressive, as repressive, as uh, a terrible proposal and a non-starter. And he said, look, if this is the proposal, it's either this proposal or a lockout. He said, and I'm quoting, he said, give me the lockout. So cool. if things aren't looking uh, very good uh, in the NBA. Uh, so I, I'm not as optimistic uh, as I am, for example, with the NFL, because ultimately I think there we may get a resolution. Eric, how unified is the NBA PA? Because was it not back in 98, 99 that the owners essentially waited the players out and then there started to be a fracture and the owners essentially then got what they want? And I guess the added question to that question is, is this particular offer – uh, so obscene to the players and their union that they will remain united against it. Well, you know, in Billy Hunter's words, I mean, he he was appalled and offended by the CBA proposal. But you know, ultimately, Scott, uh, owners generally have staying power, right? When players get deprived of their paychecks or see that coming, that's maybe when you start to see fractures in solidarity. However, there's one difference this time around. And that is NBA players could find employment overseas, and they could be paid very well for that. And that's how we've heard that LeBron James, that Kobe Bryant have said publicly, look, if there's no NBA, I'm going to play overseas, and I'm going to get paid handsomely for it. And there's the big difference because in the NFL, for example, players don't have other options. But in the NBA, the players do have other options. So while I would say the staying power is, is with the owners, generally speaking, they now have this new issue, and that is players can play overseas. And Billy Hunter, the, the union head, mentioned this, and he said and his exact words were they should be very concerned about that. Hmm. Couldn't, couldn't disagree with that at all. But when you look at what you mapped out for us, I mean, these are – each one of these things uh, is a potential deal-breaker, but the guaranteed to non-guaranteed contracts – Wow. I mean, what, what fuels all this? Obviously, they must be crying very poor. You know, they are, they are crying very poor. They're, you know, Stern has taken the position that the majority of NBA teams have lost money, and, and so one thing they want to do is go to non-guarantee contracts. They find a lot of guys, you know, six, seventh uh, guys on the team are sitting on the bench with massive contracts. The problem with trying to roll back to non-guaranteed contracts is how do you put that genie back in the bottle? You know, uh, guaranteed contracts are something the union is going to is going to fight for. What what I suspect though um, is that Jim is that this is just a negotiating ploy on the part of the NBA, and that maybe they would happily drop their request for non guaranteed contracts so long as there is a rollback in salaries, and so long as the salary cap is dropped and dropped dramatically. So kind of similar to what happened in the NHL in 0405, exception being that there was the advent of the salary cap then. Yeah, you know, I have been comparing the NHL situation 2004-2005 to the situation the NBA is going through right now since about August or September of last year. Um, the situations look very similar. I mean, both sports, unlike the NFL, both sports, as far as North America goes at least, have regional appeal. So for that reason, you know, how uh, the, the uh, clubs generate their revenue regionally maybe less, um, more so than, than the NFL. And so the, the, the NBA needs to insulate each of these teams as best they can, and that's where this proposal comes from. But again, they are seeking a drastic overhaul of their business model because they are crying poor.
Eric Macromella, our legal analyst, is with us. Uh, so you were talking in optimistic terms about the NFL situation. What kind of a track is it on in your mind? And I, I guess it's, it's relative. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now um, the lockout will be in place until probably mid to end of June. The Court of Appeal said a couple weeks ago, you know, when they put that lockout back in place, they said, and I'm quoting, the league has made a strong showing that it is likely to succeed on the merits. And that relates to the hearing coming up as to whether the, the, the lockout is legal to begin with. So the Court of Appeals is actually tipping its hand. They're saying, you know what, when we actually listen to this and, and determine whether the lockout is legal, you know, in June, it looks like, you know, there's a decent chance we may find in favor of the owners. So you guys better figure this out. And if they find in favor of the owners, guys, the lockout can stay in place for as long as the NFL wants it to stay in place. And here's one really important thing to remember is that of the 1,900 or so NFL players, half of that population makes $500,000 or less, and their playing career is about three to three and a half years. So you can bet the closer we get to the NFL season, half that NFL population is going to stand up beside guys like Breeze and Manning and Brady who make 15 or 20 million a year and say, you know what? Our voice must be heard as well, and that's what the NFL is counting on, and that goes back to what I was talking about before, and that is staying power. I just want to go over, you know, just a fine point here. I mean, the, the lockout routine has worked so well before. What's the difference this time, and why is there a challenge, and, and why could it fall apart? Uh, the players are alleging that the lockout, constitutes an antitrust violation, or another term for antitrust is a competitive violation. I know for sports fan, antitrust is, is kind of like the A word. We've heard that since we've been like two years old. Mm -hmm. But basically, the players are alleging that the NFL owners are competitors, and they can't get together and impose a lockout. Competitors are not allowed under antitrust law to get together and impose restrictions in the marketplace. So they're saying that this lockout is actually that. They've all gotten together and locked out the players. So the players sued to get the lockout lifted. They were successful. The court appeals said, whoa, hang on a second. The, the NFL can, in fact, put the lockout in place, and the court of appeal dropped that lockout back down. And the court of appeal is saying that when we listen to the case in a couple weeks, there's a pretty decent chance we're not going to change our mind and that lockout stays in place. Eric, we've got to let you run, but uh, give us a, a quick Twitter plug and give us a quick link to your blog. Uh, Twitter account is uh, Eric on Sports Law. And uh, sports, my blog is uh, sportslawblog.ca. Uh, and uh, on the Twitter, I guess, on Friday night, I, I, uh, I broke that little story that uh, uh, the NHL would announce uh, the move to Winnipeg uh, Tuesday. There you go. Very good. Looks like you're okay. bang on. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Eric, thanks so much. You're welcome. Eric Macromella, our sports legal